Hi and welcome to Teach the Table. I'm Nathan and this is Gaia Project. It's a game of space colonization set in the Terra Mystica galaxy. So if you've played Terra Mystica, the gameplay is very similar. But each player has a different faction with unique requirements and abilities. And over six rounds, you'll be colonizing planets with your buildings, upgrading those buildings, and uniting your planets to form a federation. Additionally, the game has scoring objectives to lead the players in a certain direction towards certain goals, because ultimately the player with the most points is the winner. Before I start with the gameplay, there's a few aspects to understand. So on top of your faction board here, there's a resource track, and this number line tracks how much ore and knowledge you have, and as well as two markers for money. So as such, you can never have more than 15 ore or knowledge, or you can never have more than 30 money, because you add up the total of the two markers. So right now I have 15. Most of your faction board is covered in buildings, as well as a diagram on how you can upgrade them. Placing a new building will start with a mine, which can later be upgraded into a trading station, meaning that your mine would come back to you from the board as you put a trading station there in its place. Buildings come off of your board from left to right, and they reveal a new trait underneath, which is available as long as it is visible. Any icon with a hand underneath like this means that it's income that you can gain each turn. Similarly, trading stations can be upgraded to planetary institutes or research labs, and labs can be turned into academies. Academies are unique, and you can choose which one to build as they have two different abilities underneath, so it doesn't have to go left to right. Each faction has a type of planet that they colonize best, but before colonizing a planet that's a different type, you need to make it habitable for your faction, as indicated on this chart on your faction board. This shows how many terraforming steps you need to pay for before placing your first building there. The exceptions are the green Gaia planets, which cost one QIC, quantum intelligence cube, to make habitable. And there's purple transdim planets that cannot be built on. But you can turn them into green Gaia planets by using a Gaia project, hence the title of the game, where you're converting a purple transdim planet into a green Gaia planet to be built on later. Another thing to understand is the power cycle. You have three areas here to hold your purple power tokens, and you can only spend the power that's in section three. But to get it there, you need to charge your power first. You always charge from the lowest section first. So if you add an icon like this with an arrow over it, an arrow to the right indicates that I can charge two power. So I'd have to do these two since they're in the lowest section. Now if I could charge two more, they'd all come from here. Some icons like this mean that you get to gain power, so you get an additional power token from the supply that gets to go into your lowest numbered section. So you can see the difference between gaining power and charging power. Icons like this with the black arrows to the left mean that you can spend a power to do something, but again, you'd have to have power in section three to spend it to get some bonus. If you want, you can always discard a power token from section two in order to put another one in section three. But this is not very efficient as you're losing power tokens each time you do it. Lastly, there's a research board here and there are six technology tracks that you can research on there. Each spot on the tracks can unlock immediate and or permanent benefits. And any icon that looks sparkly or shiny with an aura around it means that you would gain it immediately once you research that. These tiles on the bottom are technology tiles, and you can have one of each type, so you can't have any duplicates. Grabbing a tile lets you gain one spot on the track that it's associated with. Or if you grab one of these three on the bottom here, you can gain any one spot on any of the tracks. Aside from the benefits printed on the tracks, you also gain four bonus points for each track you're able to get into section three or higher. So any of the top halves of the track can net you four points. Let's take a look at the scoring board. During each round, there will be one tile here indicating points that you gain for doing something in that round. For example, in round one, you get three points each time you play a mine on a Gaia planet. Also, there are two final scoring tiles here with tracks to rank each player's progress, and points will be awarded at the end of the game according to the ranking, 18, 12, and 6 points. Each tile is explained in the rules, so I recommend just reading that section when the tiles come out for the first time so everyone knows what the goals are. Now onto the gameplay. The game's played over six rounds, each broken up into four phases. The income phase, the Gaia phase, and that's where transdim planets can be turned into green Gaia planets. The action phase, which is where most of the game takes place, and then a cleanup phase. We rinse, repeat at the end of six rounds. Whoever has the most points is the winner. The income phase involves looking at your faction board, your round booster tile, any tech tiles you have, and any spots where you're at on the research board. And you're looking for icons with that hand symbol with the palm up. 
gain whatever it says, and you can do them in any order, but when it comes to charging or gaining power, you have to use each icon fully. For instance, you couldn't decide to charge one power, do something else, and then charge the other power. You'd have to do all of it at once. Phase two is the Gaia phase. Remove all power from this green Gaia area following the arrow into the area that it indicates, usually area one of your power cycle. This will make more sense later, but if a player has a Gaia former on a purple transdim planet, then you're gonna put a green Gaia planet token on there. You also leave your Gaia former on top to reserve the planet so other players can't swoop in and build on it from under you. You spent all the resources to convert it into a Gaia planet anyways. That would just be rude. Phase three is the action phase, where most of the game happens. Starting with the player with the first player token and moving clockwise, each player can take one action. This continues around the table, one action per turn until they pass. The first player to pass takes the first player token for the next round, and each time a player passes, they're gonna take one of the new round booster tiles, put it face down next to them, and put their one they were using back into the general supply. Sometimes an effect might trigger when you pass, indicated by this icon with the red arrow and the round booster on there. Once you pass, you're out of the action phase, but all the other players can continue taking actions until all players have passed. This player age shows all possible actions with passing here on the bottom. The actions are build a mine, start a Gaia project, upgrade a building, can form a federation with a group of your planets, you can pay knowledge to gain research, you can take purple power actions, green QIC actions, or orange special actions as indicated on the board or the pieces. And keep in mind that this chart on your faction board shows free actions that you can do on your turn before or after your normal action. They're all spend something to gain something, but the chart goes multiple directions. For instance, you could spend four power to gain one knowledge, and you could spend one knowledge to gain one money. So just follow those arrows. To build a mine, you first have to choose an empty planet. It needs to be accessible from one of your other planets. It also needs to be habitable to your faction. And on top of that, you have to pay a cost down here to build the building. To determine accessibility, first you look at the navigation, this blue research track. Most players start with a range of one, meaning that you have access to planets that are one space from your other colonized planets. Remember, for a free action, you can always spend a QIC to add two range temporarily. If a planet isn't your preferred terrain type, you need to pay for a number of terraforming steps to make it habitable. On the terraforming research track, the brown track, it shows the cost in ore for each terraforming step. So for example, if I wanted to build on this red planet, I would need one terraforming step, and each terraforming step here is three ore. So I'd pay three ore in order to make that habitable. Gaia planets only cost one QIC cube to make habitable. And keep in mind that if you turned a transdim planet into a Gaia planet, your Gaia form is still on that planet. So it's already considered accessible and habitable. You don't have to even pay a QIC to build on there. So you pay the cost of your mine and you build your mine there and take your Gaia former back to your board. Anytime you build, you must pay all costs for the mine, the accessibility, and the terraforming all at once, or you can't build a mine there. To start a Gaia project, you first need a Gaia former that's not in use. You gain these from the purple track on the research board. You also need a transdim planet that's accessible, same rules as building a mine, and you pay a power cost as shown on the research board. So starting out, the first power cost once you've gained your first Gaia former is six power. And this isn't necessarily spending power, it's just moving it from any of these three sections into this green Gaia spot. So in my case, I would place six power into the Gaia area, place my Gaia former on the transdim planet because it's within one of my mine, and now I have to wait because forming a new planet takes some time. So it won't be completed until the Gaia phase next round, which is what I described earlier, which should make a little more sense now. To upgrade a structure like I described earlier, you need to follow the flow on your faction board to upgrade certain buildings into others. You pay the cost, return the original building to your board, and put the new building in its place. Note that the trading station has two costs. So if you build a trading station within two spaces of an opponent's structure, you get the discounted lower price. This is called a neighboring area, if opponents are within two spaces of each other. Another thing to note is there's a white outline kind of traced in the research lab and academy areas on your board. And that's to remind you that when you build one of either of those buildings, you gain one tech tile from the research board. Remember that gaining a tech tile lets you gain one research spot 
on one of the tracks as well. And there are also advanced tech tiles at the top of each research track, so if you qualify, then you can take an advanced tech tile instead of a regular tech tile. In order to take an advanced tile, you have to be on spot four or five of the associated research track. You need to have formed at least one federation so that you can discard by flipping over one of your federation tiles to its gray side. And you also need another regular tech tile in order to put the advanced tile on top because they fit right on top of another tech tile like so. When you take the advanced tech tile, you still get to gain one research spot on that track. So what's the deal with the federation tiles? Well, one of the actions you can take is forming a federation of your planets, which will gain you one of these tiles, and you'll get everything that's on the tile and the tile sits next to your player board green side up, which you can flip over to the gray side to gain an advanced tech token like I explained earlier, or you can flip it over to the gray side to advance to the final space on the research track. Only one person can get to the last spot on each research track. To form a federation, you need a group of colonized planets where your buildings have a total power of at least seven. Seven is the magic number. The power values are located underneath each building on your faction board. Once you've figured out your lucky number seven, you must also connect the planets with these satellite tokens if they aren't adjacent to each other already. One satellite goes on each space between the planets like so. For each satellite that you build, you have to discard a power from anywhere on your power cycle. Federations you build must be as cheap as possible, so if you could do it with fewer satellites, you have to do that. The satellite will indicate that you formed a federation, but in the event that your planets are all adjacent, you can place one of these federation tokens there so that you can help keep future federations separate. One of the actions you can do is spending four knowledge to increase one research level. This follows all the other rules that we already described, so you gain a level, you get something, hooray! Lastly, there are the power, QIC, or special actions, which are indicated by little hexagons. And these can only be used once per round. So anytime that you use it, we have a special token to cover it up so no one else can do it again in that round. There's one last thing to keep you paying attention on other players' turns. Passive power charging. When an opponent builds or upgrades within the neighboring area, which is two spaces of one of your other buildings, you can spend victory points to charge some power. You can charge power equal to the power of your building, and it's gonna cost you that many victory points minus one. So for example, this building is a two power building, so I can charge two power by spending one victory point. If you had multiple buildings within the neighboring area, you can only do this for the highest power building. The other rule is that you always have the choice to do it or don't do it, but you can't choose to only partially do it. The exception is if you're limited by how much you can charge, or if you don't have enough victory points to spend, then you can just do as much as you can and stop there. The other rule is that the player who places the building or upgrades the building, it's their responsibility to ask the neighboring players who are affected if they'd like to do the passive power charging, because it's not their turn. They might not be paying full attention. And that's all the actions. After everyone took all the actions they wanted and they passed, the last phase is cleanup. The action tokens are removed, Flip your new round booster over so it's in the active side, and we're gonna flip the round token over to show that we're on the new round. After six rounds, the game is over and final scoring happens. Players gain points based on their ranking on these final scoring tiles, but ties are handled a little differently than most games. You add together the points for the tied rank and then the next lower rank, and then divide by two to award each tied player those points. So for instance, tying for first place, you'd get 18 plus 12, which is 30, divided by two is 15, so each player would get 15. In effect, they're gonna be scoring points halfway between the tied rank and the next rank. Like I mentioned earlier, players score four points for each research track that they reached at least level three on, and one additional point for every three credits or, or knowledge at the end of the game in any combination. The player with the most points on the victory point track wins, and if there's a tie at the end, it's just a shared victory. Once you're more comfortable with the game, there's also advanced rules at the end of the rulebook, which I won't go over now, because if you're watching this video, you probably aren't ready for them yet. Definitely keep the rulebook handy, so as new tiles come out or new icons are revealed, you can easily flip to this page and tell everyone what those mean. Also keep in mind that some factions have special abilities in this section on your faction board, and some are trickier than others, so just make sure you're familiar with that before the start of the first game. And that's how you play Gaia Project. So get out there, build some buildings, and research your butts off. As always, thanks for watching Teach the Table. If you like these videos, feel free to subscribe to my channel or ring that bell for notifications of new videos. And don't forget to have fun.